So, Tina, great to have you with us at Web Summit. Really pleased you can be here. Pleased to be um, here, Ashley. Thanks I'm for having really me. pleased this is the first session because you're doing something really exciting, which is building the world's first truly tech-driven pharmaceutical company. Um, we want to talk about that in a second, but you, you've come from 25 years of experience in this industry. So let's start there okay. and tell us how you ended up at Recursion. Yeah, well, if I go back um, many decades and think about how I ended up in medicine in the first place. So um, I was inspired by engineering as a child. My father's an engineer, and he actually worked at Hewlett Packard and saw the whole evolution of the electronics industry. So I grew up around engineers, and so I've always loved engineering, but I really... Um, was called to do something with an impact. And so I got a degree in biochemical engineering and entered the biotechnology industry, as you mentioned, more than two decades ago. And it's just been such an incredible career. And I think there's, um, that, that's kind of what drew me into it in the beginning, this like mixture of being able to apply engineering to, to something so mission driven. But what's kept me in it all of these years is this ability to impact patients. And so um, I've had the opportunity, um, and I can think of a couple times in my life when I've been out just in my community, actually like doing, playing tennis or doing sports and run into people and get talking about what I do. And they've stopped and said, I'm alive today because of a drug that you've worked on, right? And I think those kind of moments, um, as we're probably gonna get into, uh, working in healthcare is hard, disrupting medicine is hard. But I think it's like those moments in my life that's really kept me, um, kept me in the industry and then um, landed me three and a half years ago at Recursion. Yep, so a really nice story. What, what attracted you to Recursion? So what, what made you move across to you know, a really sort of fast-driven, tech-based pharma company? Yeah, so the opportunity at Recursion is, as you mentioned, is to industrialize drug discovery. So really applying the best of the tech industry and honestly, the best of all of these tools, like say CRISPR that are in the life science industry now, to really change the way that we discover new medicine. Uh, we just heard um, how kind of broken the, our pharma R&D pipeline is. We need to do something different in order to get better medicines to patients, get them to them faster, get access um, to these medicines. And technology offers some really fantastic tools. So I was very excited about that premise. And it, and it actually spoke to, uh, you know, the first thing I got to do coming into industry was work on, at Genentech, which was the company that was pioneering the biotech industry using a technology platform. Genentech's, you know, originally technology was applying recombinant DNA technology to develop an entirely, you know, new class of therapeutics we now call, bio, call biologics. And so uh, for me, Recursion honestly offers this opportunity to, to be in that for the second time in my career to, to see the pioneering company that can revolutionize our industry. So it was, it was yeah. an opportunity I, I, I couldn't deny. <laughs> so for those who may not know, just give us a very quick summary of what Recursion is because it's a really exciting um, you know, model. Yeah, so at Recursion, we're building uh, what we call the operating system for industrializing drug discovery. And so the way that, that I think about it is uh, back in the day when I was working in a laboratory and, you know, and you're kind of, I was pipetting, um, you know, cells and other things from test tube to test tube, I'd be lucky to maybe generate a dozen good data points in a week. Uh, at, at Recursion today, by comparison, we generate uh, about 1.8 million experiments wow. every week um, using the convergence of technologies like robotics, the computational power, deep learning algorithms to handle the data. And as I mentioned, you know, these modern ways in which we can um, manipulate biology in order to model disease in the laboratory. And so Recursion is building everything from the, the very early funnel um, at scale using things like taking pictures of primary human cells um, that we've trained to essentially model the difference between a healthy human cell and a diseased human cell. We can take advantage of technologies like the facial recognition technology to essentially do cellular recognition. And we can do that at very large scale. Um, each data point is relatively cheap at these scales. Um, and, and we can use that to identify potential new medicines and then go through and keep building the technology stack all the way through the drug R&D process. Yeah, and we were talking earlier that you're generating huge amounts of data. Not that it's a competition against you know, other people like Twitter or Netflix, but give us, a, give us a sense of the scale of the amount of data you're generating. 
Um, well, well, not a competition, but we all like a little friendly competition. And so um, our data set today is about nine petabytes. And uh, for those of you that don't like live in the world of petabytes, that's more, for example, than every high definition, definition movie ever made, right? Wow. Since you mentioned Netflix, um, the, the size of our data pipe uh, is actually larger at, at, than the, the Twitter fire hose. And so these are very, very large volumes of data. Um, I mentioned just the, the volume, you know, we have these wet laboratories, right, where these actual, these are actual human cells um, that we're running actual experiments on. And so when you think about the, um, you know, the, the, image t the image upload, the amount of images we're generating, all the way to even, you know, before you go into human patients, you actually have to run things in, in animal models. And so the, the opportunity to use computer vision video feeds on in these animal studies so that we can detect signals, better signals earlier and faster, and kind of everything in between. So all of those things uh, create a pretty large, what we call our, our recursion data universe. Yeah. So it's all really exciting. I had the pleasure of talking to Chris, one of your co-founders back in Collision a couple of years ago, but you've grown so much in those last two years and you had your IPO back in April this year, wasn't that right? In April, so tell, yes. tell us a bit about that because that's really exciting and what that allows you to do to overcome the hurdles for the future as well. Yeah, so uh, Recursion is definitely a high growth company. And I joined Recursion. Recursion was originally founded in 2013. You mentioned our co-founder and CEO, Chris Gibson. And um, you know, he jokes he, was, he, he dropped out of medical school to found the company, which is actually true. This yeah. was, uh, uh, came out of University of Utah research he was doing um, with our co-founder, Dean Lee. And so the company itself is about eight years old. And I joined the company three and a half years ago, which was after our Series B raise. And um, at that time, we were about 90 people. Uh, today, we're over 300 people in, in three and a half years to give a sense of the, the talent that, that's come into the company. Uh, raised Series A and Series B, which were our early rounds. Um, C, we raised a D last year. And then, we, as you mentioned, we went public um, on NASDAQ. We're now listed under RxRx this year. And so I think the growth story, both in terms of the growth of the, the fundraising and capital that we have available to do what we do. And, and it is a fairly capital intensive endeavor, uh, building all of these laboratories, bringing in all the equipment, all, all of the people required to both run and generate the physical data set as well as to analyze the, the science and, and take the drugs to clinic on the other end. So we've seen the, the growth in our capital. Uh, beyond the money itself, we've seen a transition from early on, it was really the um, kind of the visionary tech VCs that were willing to invest in this kind of audacious idea that you could use technology to disrupt the pharma industry. And, and as we generated more data, as the, the science proved itself out over time, we've transitioned to now where we have both these, these tech investors that continue to be interested, but we really also capture the imagination of forward-looking life science investors. And so now our later rounds, as well as um, you know, presumably our, our public investors, are a nice uh, balance of both of those worlds. Yeah, so you, you, huge amount of growth over the last couple of years. There's lots of uh, you know, businesses here that are seeing that growth as well. What have, what have been the challenges for you around that rapid growth, the change in culture, um, and any, any experiences or any advice you can give to other people in that situation as well? Yeah, absolutely, Ashley. Uh, well, I think, you know, we tend to talk a lot about, you know, fundraising and even, you know, for us building facilities, but in reality, it all comes down to people, right? Like companies are made of people. And so, you know, the, the advice I would give to anybody, um, well, first of all, if you want to disrupt medicine, um, it's going to be hard. It's going to take some patience. So, like, um, it's the most, I think, rewarding thing, um, you know, in, in, in my opinion, somebody can do, um, but it's not for the, uh, the faint of heart. Um, but really, the, the advice I would give, when you bring medicine with technology, these are culturally very, very different industries. And so something that... Uh, recursion has done, you know, in my opinion, really well from the start is be very thoughtful about and very intentional about, about building a culture where people that come from a tech background, maybe data scientists, deep learning experts, machine learning experts, software engineers, they are seamlessly working with people that come from life science backgrounds, biologists, chemists, others. And um, th that sounds relatively simple, but these are very culturally very different industries. Tech is you know, go for it, move fast, fail fast, fail fast and often, very iterative. Uh, medicine tends to be much more conservative, right? Yeah. You know, for good yeah. reason, right? Because you can do harm to people. And so 
Um, the magic of building a company like Recursion or any technology-enabled um, you know, healthcare company is being able to fully bring together, to fully value, to fully welcome and include what can be these very um, often opposite perspectives. And I think one just like little story along those lines, you know, somebody who comes and has been trained for um, a long time in the healthcare field, I remember going to my first board meeting at Recursion and when we took a break in the board meeting, one of the board members tweeted something out that we just talked about in the boardroom and my jaw just like fell to the floor. Like, what have I done? <laughs> like, it's so different coming from a world of, you know, healthcare authority compliance and things moving relatively slow and being thinking about everything before you put it out. Just this concept of kind of hearing something and taking action was very uncomfortable to me. Um, but it was also fine, right? And, and so I think, you know, one value that we, something we really value at Recursion is humility and, 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 and showing up, um, being humble enough to learn because none of us, no matter what our backgrounds, if we come from life science, if we come from tech, um, if we have lots of years of experience, if we have zero years of experience, none of us knows exactly how this is gonna work out. None of us has the whole story. None of us can contribute everything, but we can all contribute something and we can learn from, from each other. And I think that's probably the best advice I would give for anybody trying to build at this intersection of medicine and technology is like be humble and figure out how to include all the voices yeah. uh, and don't let one culture dominate over another. Yeah, really great advice. So in the last minute or two, let's just look a bit further forward in the future. So you've had okay. a lot of growth over the last couple of years. Where do you see this industry and more generally in health over the next sort of five or 10 years? Um, yeah, five to 10 years, I think. Or even three or five years. Three to five, you're, I know, you're, I know. You're, I was you're like, going I was so like, fast. It's so funny, you know, five to 10 is fine and we move so fast, right? Um, so I think one thing is that, you know, a few years ago, even, you know, when I joined Recursion, there was still a lot of skepticism that the that, that data and technology actually could disrupt medicine. And I think, you know, I heard this term black box a lot. And, and what that tells me is that we have a lot of scientists that have not been deeply trained in how to think about data, right? Our, our human brains tend to be fairly two-dimensional, maybe three-dimensional in our thinking, and biology is a very high-dimensional problem. Biology is very complex. And so when, when I see the world five, 10 years from now, um, scientists are, you know, this concept of scientists pipetting things into test tubes and getting a graph with like, um, you know, five data points on it, it's almost gonna seem, I think, a little bit silly <laughs> uh, um, in a way, whereas that's still how a lot of science is done today. You know, we take what we can conceive as a human, we try to test the hypothesis and we graph it out. And in the future, very much so, data is gonna drive us to where the answers are, where the good medicines are. Um, and I think in terms of where I see recursion at that time, uh, I think we, we will have shown the, the world what's possible in terms of decoding biology for therapeutics. And I think we'll also have started to look at other applications like diagnostics, agriculture, et cetera. Yeah. So all the th ways you can d decode biology for, uh, for the good. It's really exciting, Tina. Like it's been amazing to see the progress since we met with Chris two years ago. Really looking forward to seeing where recursion is in two years time. So look Me forward too. to hearing from you then. Thanks a lot for speaking to us today. Let's give Tina a round of applause. Thanks so much, Ashley.